Sam, what brings you here at such a late hour? Is something wrong? Startled by the doorbell that broke the night's silence, I gently opened the front door. There, standing in the rain, was my drenched grandson, Sam. As he quietly looked down and slowly turned back, I saw his little sister, Holly, sound asleep on his back. I carefully and lovingly took Holly from Sam's back. Can my sister stay here tonight? And for dinner too. His voice was barely audible over the sound of the heavy rain in the night. First, come inside the house. My husband and I, with kindness in our hearts, gently ushered both Holly and Sam into the house. Reunited after a long time, we were internally overjoyed at seeing how much our grandson had grown. But contrary to our joy, Sam didn't touch the warm meal prepared for him, just silently kept looking down. Sam, is there something heavy on your mind? Can you talk about it? He briefly looked up, but upon meeting my eyes, he quickly averted his gaze and looked down again. Sam, if you don't share what's in your heart, we can't understand. Unable to bear his silence, my husband began speaking in a slightly stern tone. Surprised by his words, Sam then started to open up, speaking in a thin, tentative voice. After finishing his story, he spoke with a look of resolution. I'm a burden to the family. Could you please take care of Holly? Leaving those words behind, Sam quickly stood up and ran towards the entrance. Sam, wait. Don't run away. My husband hurried to stop him, but Sam, now nearly as tall as him, forcefully shook off his hand. Don't run away from this. Taking care of a child isn't that simple. He yelled, trembling with anger, then ran after Sam, holding him tightly to stop him. But, at least, please protect my sister. Sam lost the energy to resist and remained silent, hanging his head over the chest. My name is Carolyn. Along with my husband, Jerry, we lead a peaceful life. It looks like there's a high chance of rain this afternoon. As part of his morning routine, my husband spreads out the newspaper while watching the news on TV, and then checks the day's weather reports while biting into his breakfast sandwich. How many times must I tell you, the newspaper gets dirty. Decide whether you're reading it or eating it, please. Carolyn, it might be wise not to hang the laundry outside today. My words seemed to fall on deaf ears as he was immersed in his own world. This is a typical scene in our household. My husband is two years older than me, turning 60 this year, and is set to retire from his job. He's not the type to get lost in hobbies, he's always been dedicated to his work. The other day, I was talking with a colleague at my part-time job about how, after retirement, some people rapidly lose cognitive functions or become reclusive. It made me think it's good to find a hobby outside of work while there's still time. Jerry, what are you planning to do next year? You'll have a lot of free time without work, right? Ah, uh, yes, that's true. While saying so, he looked around the room and his gaze fell on a family photo on the shelf. In it, our son Ian, his wife Jasmine, and grandchildren Sam and Holly were smiling happily. This photo was taken at Holly's first birthday party. I wonder how Sam and Holly are doing. He mentioned the grandchildren for the first time in a while. I would also like to know. We haven't seen our son's family for over three years now. They live just an hour's drive from us. In theory, we could visit any time, but it seems Jasmine intentionally avoided interacting with us. As a result, Ian has also gradually started keeping his distance from us. Even when I send texts saying I want to talk, I get turned down, and there's no reply to our Christmas cards either. Sam really likes fish, doesn't he? Yes, indeed. He used to say he wanted to go fishing together. Really? When was that? 
I wondered if they really had promised each other that. Sam certainly looked up to my husband. I remember the days when Sam, as a little boy, spent time with my husband. When I retire, I'll have plenty of time. I promise to go fishing with Sam. Well, now he's a high school freshman and probably understands that tuna fishing isn't so simple. Saying this, Jerry took a sip of his tea with a slightly sad smile. It used to be common for them to visit us often, but now. The strain in our relationship with our son's family began when Ian remarried with Jasmine five years ago. After graduating high school, Ian started working at a construction company, where he met and first married a woman four years his senior. From that marriage, Sam was born. Ian's first wife was calm and mature, which helped her support Ian aptly. I remember being deeply surprised when Ian, who hardly ever did household chores, started skillfully making soup after he got married. I was always grateful to her for marrying him, but she would always deny it with a gentle smile. Ian is really a straightforward and good person. He tried to use a knife with his left hand for chopping vegetables because I am left-handed, despite being right-handed himself. That's a sweet story. Yes, thanks to Ian, our home is always filled with laughter. I felt genuine happiness seeing their family of three living blissfully together. I'm so sorry for suddenly asking you to pick up Sam from daycare the other day. I brought you some pickles that I know you like as a thank you. Thank you, that's lovely. But please don't hesitate to ask. I finish my part-time job by 4 p.m., so I can always pick him up from daycare. That's really helpful to hear, thank you so much. She always knew how to behave properly and had built a very good relationship with our family. I believed this happiness would last forever, but when Sam was nine, we were told his mother had been diagnosed with cancer. The cancer was quite advanced, and she was given only six months to live. Carolyn, I'm truly sorry. Please, look after my son for me. In the hospital room, she spoke these earnest words. Don't apologize. If I could, I would take your place. I couldn't hold back my tears. These past 10 years, I have been truly happy. Thanks to Ian and Sam, I have had so many smiles and happy times. I want them to continue living with happy smiles. I wish the same happiness for you and Jerry. With those words, she showed a warm smile. And just as her time was predicted, she peacefully passed away on a crisp autumn day. After that, a new life began for Ian and Sam, just the two of them. Ian was busy with work and often came home late, so I would go to Sam's house every day after my part-time job to take care of him. On weekends, when Ian was busy with work, we were more than happy to take care of Sam at our house. Is there anywhere you'd like to go? Let's go wherever Grandpa and Grandma want to. Sam was never self-centered, always carefully observing the actions of adults. He seemed to be considerate towards us, his grandparents, which sometimes made me worry about him. We need to properly support Sam. Yes, that's right. In such a situation, when Sam expressed his wishes during shopping, I'd like to have some fish. His candid feelings came through, and we felt truly happy about it. Actually, I'm thinking of getting remarried. Ian shared this news with us when Sam turned 11. His new partner was a 23-year-old woman named Jasmine. Jasmine was 10 years younger than Ian and worked part-time at a pub where they met and hit it off. Hearing Ian's story made me a bit worried. But my concerns grew when Ian brought Jasmine home for the first time. Nice to meet you, I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Jasmine was dressed in a casual sweater and a short skirt, with large earrings and a designer handbag. Despite her beautiful appearance, she seemed a bit naive due to her youth. You're only 23. 
Aren't you worried about suddenly becoming Sam's mother if you marry Ian? I asked her with a serious expression. I think I'll manage. Right? Yeah, I believe we'll figure it out. Hearing their casual responses, my husband and I exchanged glances. Surrounded by unspoken complex feelings, we quietly spent time together. About two months later, Ian and Jasmine got married. Dad, can we use the house where your brother used to live? I want to save money for the future. My husband's brother had moved abroad four years earlier, and his house was under my husband's care. My husband planned to rent it out, but the plan hadn't materialized due to his busy schedule. It would help if you two lived there. Just keep in mind, Sam will need to change school. That's fine, I'm sure Sam will adapt quickly to the new school. With this arrangement, their family moved to the house owned by my husband, about an hour's drive from ours, and started a new life. Previously, I used to see Sam almost every day, but with Jasmine joining the family, my visits to their house became unnecessary, and the opportunities to meet Sam significantly decreased. Still, Ian would leave Sam with us a few times a month when they went out on dates. Despite my mixed feelings about their reasons for leaving him, the time spent with Sam was precious and always a joy for us. Sam himself, young as he was, seemed to understand his parents' situation and acted with consideration, which worried me. Sam, how do you like your new school? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's fun. I was sad about changing schools at first, but I've already made new friends. Thinking about Sam being forced to change schools due to his parents' decision pained my heart. I was curious about his relationship with Jasmine but hesitated to ask directly, so I didn't press further. Well, that's good to hear. How about we go get chicken wings with Grandpa and Grandma today? Really? Awesome. I'm going to eat lots of chicken. Seeing Sam's genuine smile gave me some relief. A year passed, and Sam had a little sister, Holly. I want to have a baby shower for Holly. Next, I'd like to do a photo shoot with Holly. Ian and Jasmine gradually began asking for money using Holly as a pretext. This was a change from when Sam was little, so I felt conflicted but always sent more than they asked for Holly's sake and to give Sam some allowance. Once Holly could sit up properly, Ian and Jasmine often left the kids with us to go out. We need some time to refresh ourselves now and then. Dad and Mom, you enjoy time with your grandkids, right? After handing over the children at the door, Ian and Jasmine would quickly leave. After they had gone, we felt a little sad, but it warmed our hearts to see Sam and Holly playing happily with my husband in the house. Sam adored his younger sister Holly, and she seemed to trust him a lot. Even when Holly started crying, she would stop as soon as Sam gently sang to her. Despite our concerns about Ian and Jasmine's behavior, the precious time we spent with our grandchildren was a great joy for us. However, around the time of Holly's first birthday, the number of times Sam and Holly visited our home decreased dramatically. Sam, now a middle schooler, might have been too busy. With these thoughts, I reached out to Ian. I have some errands in your area next Sunday. Would it be okay if I stop by for a little while? Um, yeah, but I need to check with Jasmine first. After receiving an unclear response on the phone, I got a brief text reply saying, it's not a good time for us. Despite several attempts to contact Ian and Jasmine, they always had some reason, and I never got to see Sam or Holly again. We spent days worrying if we had said something to upset them. Despite always being willing to provide financial support and take care of our grandchildren, all we could do was hope that Sam and Holly were happy Three years passed, and Sam became a high school student, while Holly turned four. One day, after a long period of not seeing my grandchildren, I happened to spot Sam. 
On the way back from watching a movie with friends in a nearby town, around 5 p.m. at a bus stop, a bicycle passed by. The one riding the bike was Sam, appearing to deliver food, wearing a square backpack. Sam! I called out his name impulsively, but he passed by without turning back. Are you sure it wasn't someone else? When I returned home and told my husband about the incident, he was a bit skeptical. I couldn't possibly mistake my own grandson's face. Even so, a high school student doing delivery work, is Ian's financial situation that bad? I'm not entirely sure, but I've been sending $500 each for their birthdays. Maybe that's not enough for Sam. We believed Ian's family was living happily elsewhere, but seeing Sam that day brought a wave of unease. Two weeks later, an unexpected event occurred on a day when it rained continuously. The weather forecast said it's going to rain heavily from noon, so be extra careful on your way back from work. My husband said this while having breakfast, as usual, browsing through the newspaper. And in the afternoon, the weather turned as bad as predicted. When my husband came back from work, he was drenched from the rain. The sound of rain hitting the roof was so loud that we could barely hear the TV. I guess it's about time to go to bed. Just as we were about to head to the bedroom, the doorbell rang unexpectedly. Who could it be at this late hour? Looking at the monitor, I saw Sam standing there, his head hanging low. Hurry, it's Sam. We rushed to the door, and when we opened it, there stood Sam, drenched in the rain. Sam, what happened? Why are you here so late? He quietly turned around. Is Holly with you too? I gently picked up Holly, whom Sam was carrying on his back. Can you please give Holly dinner and let her stay tonight? Soaked in the rain, Sam softly made this request. First, come inside. Holding Holly, I led them inside, and my husband guided Sam. Holly was wearing a raincoat, but it was clear that Sam had sacrificed himself to protect her from the rain. Holly, surprisingly not very wet from the rain, had fallen into a deep sleep and was put to bed peacefully. On the other hand, Sam was completely soaked, so we first had him warm up in the bath. Meanwhile, I began preparing a warm dinner for them in the kitchen. This t-shirt might be a bit large for you as it's Jerry's, but, oh, it fits you just right. Sam, you've grown so much. It's surprising to see how much you've changed since we last met. Indeed, in the hustle, we hadn't noticed that Holly had also grown up quite a bit. Seeing how big our grandchildren got after three years, we were moved. But contrary to our joy, Sam remained silent with his head down, even when the meal was ready. Sam, what's wrong? If something happened, you can talk to us. He briefly looked up at me, but soon averted his gaze. We can't understand if you don't talk to us. Unable to bear his silence, my husband raised his voice. Then, Sam quietly started to speak in a small voice. I don't think mom really accepts me. According to Sam, Jasmine was not very warm towards him from the beginning. Despite this, Sam genuinely tried to connect with his new mother. However, after Holly was born, Jasmine's attitude towards him became even colder. I really love Holly, she's my precious sister. But mom is cold to me and says, I won't care for you because we're not related by blood. Dad always sides with her and doesn't help me at all. Hearing the harsh reality from Sam filled my heart with pain. We had thought they were living happily as a family of four, but that illusion was shattered. Why didn't you come to us sooner? Well, actually. I thought Grandpa and Grandma didn't like us anymore. While crying, Sam continued his story. He said that Jasmine told him they stopped visiting because we thought taking care of our grandchildren was a hassle. I was shocked to hear this. I thought Jasmine had been refusing to let the children visit us, 
but Sam, holding back tears, continued. Even today, mom didn't make dinner for me, and Holly got angry at her on my behalf. Jasmine got mad because her own daughter sided with Sam and kicked them out of the house in the rain. But, it's good you managed to make it here. My husband gently patted Sam's head to comfort him. After buying an umbrella and a raincoat for Holly, I ran out of money. I came as far as I could by train, but had to walk the rest. That's why I'm so late, I'm really sorry. It's okay, Sam. You have nothing to apologize for. If I'm around, I just cause trouble, but please, take care of Holly. With a grave expression, he said this and hurried towards the entrance, starting to run. Wait, Sam. My husband desperately tried to stop him, but the grown-up Sam shook off his hand and fled out the door. Don't be ridiculous. Taking care of kids isn't that simple. Trembling with anger, he shouted and ran after Sam, but Sam had already given up resisting. Taking Sam from my husband's arms, I gently hugged his shoulder and said, Sam, it's not like that. We've always been desperate to see you and Holly. But Ian and Jasmine just wouldn't let us meet you. Is that true? Sam looked at me in surprise. I explained how we had tried to contact them over the past three years, our pain at not being able to meet, and that we had been sending money for their birthdays. Deeply astonished by my words, Sam slowly began to believe what I was saying, and his expression gradually softened. I didn't know any of that, about the money too. Maybe mom is using it for herself. I felt pained by this revelation. Sam further revealed that while his high school tuition was somehow covered, he received no help for daily expenses or school necessities, and was working part-time to make ends meet. Sam, are you working at a restaurant? Oh, you noticed, did you? Yes, I saw someone who looked just like you delivering food. I tried to call out, but you passed by so quickly on your bike, and I wasn't sure it was you. He nodded with a sad look on his face. Since starting high school, mom stopped making dinner for me. I get my meals from the restaurant where I work, but today was my day off. When I got home, there was no dinner for me. Holly stood up for me, but... As he spoke, tears started to fall from Sam's eyes again. It's okay, now, Sam. I gently pulled Sam into a hug. Is Ian cold to you too? My husband asked with concern. Yes, he always listens to mom. I miss how it was with my first mom. Dad was kinder back then too. Saying this, Sam began to cry loudly. My husband just sat there, holding his head in sadness. For a while, Sam's cries echoed throughout the house, but as he began to calm down, my husband quietly spoke. Sam, the don't be ridiculous comment earlier was meant for your father and Jasmine. We will absolutely protect you and Holly. That's right, you don't have to worry anymore. Oh, did Holly wake up? As we looked towards the living room door, Holly was timidly peeking at us from behind the wall. Holly, do you remember Grandpa and Grandma? She vigorously shook her head, indicating no. My husband and I exchanged glances and smiled wryly, sharing a moment of understanding. That's okay, Holly. The last time you saw us was on your first birthday. It's natural you don't remember. Wait, let me show you this. I said while picking up a photo of Holly's first birthday from the wall to show her. The moment she saw the photo, Holly's face transformed, regaining its brightness. She then quickly ran to Sam. Sam. What's up? I'm hungry. My husband and I exchanged glances again, this time with warm smiles. I'll reheat the dinner. Let's all eat plenty. Sam, can you take care of Holly's portion too? 
You know her best. With Holly awake, Sam's expression gradually softened. They enjoyed their meal heartily and soon fell asleep together in bed. Watching their peaceful faces, we held back our tears, feeling deeply moved. Resolved to make up for their hard times, we decided to protect Sam and Holly no matter what. With that determination in our hearts, we quietly got in the car and headed towards Ian's house. The lights were still on inside, and when we rang the doorbell, a perplexed Ian answered. What, why are you here so late at night? Ignoring Ian's attempt to stop us, we entered the house. In the living room, empty alcohol cans were scattered on the table, and Jasmine was sitting on the sofa, laughing while engrossed in the TV with a beer in hand. What? Jerry, Carolyn, what brings you here so late? How can you think this is okay? You need to seriously think about what in the world you've done. My husband's voice was filled with anger, causing Jasmine to visibly shake. Initially shocked, Jasmine soon regained her composure and glared at us confidently. So, Sam and Holly went to your place, huh? They came to us drenched from the rain. It seems you've been spreading lies that we hated Sam. The money we gave for the grandchildren never reached their hands. What's the meaning of this? We are their parents. That's none of your business. Ian sat down next to Jasmine, and the two unitedly glared at us in accusation. They criticized us for fully believing Sam and Holly's words and expressed their dissatisfaction. The children's custody is ours. We don't want you meddling in. We've raised them well. Raised them well? You've been bullying Sam. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, changing the atmosphere. Now what is it? Ian grumbled irritably as he went to the door and opened it, revealing two police officers standing there. I had called the police from the car, explaining the situation and asking them to come to Ian's house. The officers entered the room and immediately began to ensure the children's safety. Where did Sam and Holly go in this heavy rain? Ian and Jasmine were unable to answer the question and remained silent. I recounted the entire day's events in detail in front of everyone present. Ian, Jasmine, I will need you to come down to the station with us. With that, Ian and Jasmine were escorted to the police station by the officers. The next day, my husband and I were also called to the police station to give a detailed account of the events. Dad and Mom ignore Sam. They don't even prepare dinner for him in the evening. He's really busy with school during the day and works part-time at night. I want to help Sam too. At four years old, Holly spoke earnestly and carefully. It was clear she was distressed by the abnormal situation in their home. Her words moved me to tears. Holly looked at me curiously when she saw me crying. Why are you crying? The kindergarten teacher said that policemen are heroes of justice. They will surely help us, right? Yes, Holly, you don't have to worry anymore. Please, Mr. Policeman. Holly said this to the officer with a smile. After the grandchildren finished speaking, my husband and I were called to speak to the officer. What are your plans regarding your grandchildren's future? We expressed our firm resolve not to return Sam and Holly to Ian and Jasmine, emphasizing that we would take care of them from now on. The police provided advice on legal procedures, and we decided to consult a lawyer that my husband knew. Five days later, the lawyer visited Ian and Jasmine, who were in custody, to discuss their situation. During the meeting at the police station, we discussed four main topics. First, we made it clear that we intended to legally adopt Sam and Holly and take custody over them. Second, we decided on strict measures to prohibit any contact between Ian, Jasmine, and the children. 
Third, we declared that we would no longer provide any financial assistance to them. Fourth, we informed them that the house they were living in was set to be demolished next month, and they were ordered to vacate promptly. Initially, Ian and Jasmine expressed strong anger upon hearing these facts. Is this what you call parental affection? Ian's voice was filled with anger, but the lawyer calmly countered. Sam is your biological son. Do you really think you have the right to say that after considering what you've done to your own child? The lawyer's logical response left Ian silent and lost for words. After legal proceedings, the adoption of Sam and Holly was successfully completed, and they now live with us, surrounded by our love. They are living happily, enjoying peaceful days. Meanwhile, Ian fiercely opposed the demolition of his house, but it still proceeded. Witnessing his house being torn down, Ian was devastated and unable to stand for a while. Rumors of abuse spread at his workplace, leading to his repeated unauthorized absences and eventual dismissal. As a result, Ian and Jasmine were left penniless and lived quietly somewhere for a while, until one day, Ian came to me asking for money. If you want to cause more trouble, I'll have to call the police. Hearing this, Ian fell silent. Since that day, we haven't heard anything about Ian and Jasmine. In contrast, Sam and Holly, who started a new life with us, were initially a bit tense but gradually relaxed as we spent time together. Sam quit his part-time job and began focusing on his studies and extracurricular activities, starting to enjoy his days at school. Grandpa, what time are we leaving tomorrow? The high tide is at 8 a.m. tomorrow, so let's leave at 3 a.m. Make sure to wake me up if I don't get up on time. What? Wait a minute. My husband, who retired, enjoys going fishing with Sam. They catch various fish like squid, sea bream, and flounder. They seem to be thoroughly enjoying the fun of fishing. So, about tomorrow's breakfast sandwich. My husband stood next to me, requesting breakfast for their early fishing trip. Of course, I'll prepare the sandwich. What would you like? Can I have the usual, please? Just then, Holly entered the room with a light jog and a slightly displeased look on her face. Leaving at 3 a.m.? When will Grandma have to wake up to make breakfast? Poor Grandma, right? Holly, though only five years old, is a kind-hearted child who understands the feelings of her family well. She's a little empathizer, especially when it comes to understanding me. Sorry about that. Next time, I'll prepare it myself. I'll catch a lot of squid for you, your favorite. Really? Yay. Then Grandpa and Sam, do your best. Every day, there are heartwarming moments with Sam and Holly, bringing small joys to our household. Previously, I had minor anxieties about how our life would be after retirement, but now those worries are completely gone. With Sam and Holly joining our lives, each day is filled with new light and joy. Our days are bright and shining. Whether or not they will completely recover from their past wounds remains uncertain, but I deeply hope that this place, as a family, provides them a significant sanctuary. We firmly believe that Sam and Holly feel this house as their true home, and we want to support them to grow up securely here.